what a debacle in Knoxville, Tennessee last night. Ole Miss wins 31, Tennessee 26. This game was was already nuts before it got to the end of it. It was a fascinating football game. Two two offensive staffs that really, really know each other, right? Jeff Lebby was the offensive coordinator at UCF for Josh Heupel. These are two guys that run the same stuff. They know exactly what they're going to do. The defenses came to play last night. So talking about the game first, Matt Corral, not as great as as usual in these spots, especially against a team that you know we didn't think really had a defense. Uh, but he was 21 out of 38, 231 yards. He got baited into his first interception of the season, which is surprising since we are in week seven. Uh, but he had two touchdowns passing. The number that surprised me, 30 carries, 195 yards, man. Like, he was their running game. It was unbelievable. So, this, you know, cheers to Tennessee for keeping this thing close, for not just keeping it close, but, like, having a shot to win the ball game. Now, before I dive into some of this, I want to get your opinion on everything. The atmosphere, all of it. Tell me what you thought about that game. I thought it was a, not the game I was expecting, but still a, a really good game. You know, crowd was crazy. Crowd was wild. The atmosphere was great, you know, for the most part. At the end, it all fell apart. Everybody today is going to, and all this week is going to rip Tennessee. They're going to rip Tennessee fans. And I would like to tell all those people, be really, really, really careful. Yes. Okay. Because I'm certain that we can go back not really far away and find your team, your fan base doing that. Uh, right. That's actually literally, literally so, going going around yeah. the internet right now. A bunch of UT fans are sharing out. I think it was from last year's basketball game. It was, it was two years uh, ago, twenty nineteen. Two years ago, where, where yeah. old, with Tennessee went to Ole Miss. They Tennessee won the game. A couple of crazy calls went their way, and the fans threw trash on the basketball court at the players, at the coaches, all this stuff. And now today, all the Ole Miss fans are all sitting high and mighty on their chairs looking down at Tennessee fans, calling them trash, calling them classless. And I just want to say, this is why I don't call teams cheaters ever when, whenever they get caught doing something, because I'm under the impression that every fan base, every team is doing this. Every team is bending rules and, and manipulating regulations to do the exact same thing. Some teams get caught, some teams don't. Okay, yes. But it doesn't mean you're a cheater. I'm not going to call you a outright cheater. All right. I just don't believe in that because I think everybody's doing it. Now, if everybody else is playing fair and one team's cheating, that's different. This is not how this works. If every fan base is model citizens all the time and then one is trash, then that's different. We don't have that. We don't live in that world. No. Outside of Vanderbilt, you just will every SEC school would have this and I will guarantee you massive amounts of other schools across the country have had situations like this. I'm not defending it. I don't think it's okay. I think it's nasty. I think it's classless, but it doesn't mean that today is a day that we all just get to take a big shit on Tennessee. Yes, I I agree a hundred percent. I wrote down Brandon Walker actually tweeted this out last night about one in the morning or whatever time it was. He said a dirty little secret. Every sec stadium is capable of, of of having yeah, this happen, maybe maybe not uh, Vanderbilt. I think it'd be really hard to get Vanderbilt fans that passionate about losing a football game. If you had Vanderbilt fans super fired up about a season, and then a, a bad call goes maybe. against them late in the game, uh, yeah. maybe right? Because I think it is possible if you got if you had a James Franklin s like year, right? Maybe maybe. Uh, but I, either way, it's not just SEC; it's also just across the globe, across um, the country. But I, so I, I actually wrote down some things that I could remember. LSU, like, for years and years was known for just being ruthless, throwing batteries at opposing players, throwing Hang cups. On, I've and heard no, no, no. this. No, no, no. I've yeah. heard, give me, Gary, I've heard these things. I've, I've heard people say they throw whiskey bottles in windows. I've been at this point in time where you're talking high school and college days, all right, back in the, in the late 90s, early aughts. I've never once seen it in my life. Never. Seen, I've seen us throw trash. I've seen us throw water bottles. I've, seen, I've never seen the battery thing. I think that's a complete and utter myth. I've never seen anybody throw a whiskey bottle through some opposing fans' window. I think that's a hundred percent a myth. I've never heard about the whiskey fan or whiskey bottles through the window thing. I've I've heard the batteries. I've I've seen bottles. I've seen all kind of stuff. But also, that's just one of them, right? Uh, I also remember Ole Miss, two thousand eight had a bad call go against them in the Alabama game, 
and they threw shoes, they threw bottles, like uh, liquor bottles, glass liquor bottles down on the field as uh, as Alabama fans were, or not fans, as Alabama players were trying to exit the field. I remember Alabama in 2007. Georgia scores a walk-off touchdown in overtime. That was Mark Rick with Matt Stafford and, and that bunch. Uh, Mikey Henderson caught a pass in the back corner of the end zone right in front of the student section, and the Georgia team did a dog pile right there, and they had cups and garbage and all kind of crap that was falling all over them. So this stuff has happened before. It's not the first time. It won't be the last time. But I had, I had not seen it to this extent, right? I did. One, so we did have a couple of guys come in. Uh, Ghost Dog said, golf balls hurt, lawn darts are worse. The Flying Hawaiian uh, said, have you ever seen blackout SEC students? Ryan said, who takes range balls to football games? That is, so I did have on here, uh, who... Who carries a mustard bottle? Like, how do you get a mustard bottle? These are people a- that were tailgating, and they just brought a bunch of shit in. Somebody had it in their purse, I'm sure. Yeah, I just... Uh, or or they could have gone to the concession stand, I guess. Or they could have just gotten to the concession stand and yeah. just taken it. There's no telling. Bad officiating. Let's, let's hit on that right quick. There were multiple, multiple issues in this game, but it wasn't just this game, because uh, we're going to talk Auburn and Arkansas here in just a little bit. This... I don't know of any other kind. Like, it, it, we have bad officiating across the board in college football, but it is more synonymous with the SEC than anywhere else. How in the world do you do you reel this thing back in? Right? Like, what what do you even do here? I don't I don't know how to how to fix this problem. There's I mean, there's nothing you can do, Gary. I mean, what are you talking about? You think these guys are just going to get better at their job? We have this conversation every year. Every year we have this conversation. Last year, I think we had this conversation every week. And we just kept thinking, listen, it's our fault for expecting anything of anybody. Okay? Yeah. You just have low expectations of these people. Know that they're not just, and I'm not doing the, oh, well, they're only human. No, fuck that. All right? They're pieces of shit that are bad at their job and they're highly compensated. All right? Be better at your damn job. The biggest problem I have with officiating being bad is when you know you made a bad call and somebody is explaining to you how you missed it, you have to find a way to correct that. Like you can't, these guys get their ego. It's just like umpires, just like everybody else. They all have these huge egos and they don't want to change their mind because they think that will make them look worse when actually it will make them look a lot, lot better if they just if they just said, you know what, I got that wrong, we're going to reverse this call. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Larry jumped in. He said, SEC fans are super passionate, and it isn't close. It, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. I don't know that you would get this out of a lot of Pac-12 games, but you also might not get it out of a lot of Pac-12 games because it, there's just not as many people there that are fired up about their team. Like, I, you know, it, it, this was this was SEC's or, or Tennessee's coming out party. And... You know, I, yeah, this stuff is going to happen. This stuff is going to happen. Uh, what did you think about the the faking injuries thing? I don't know that there were as many fake injuries in that. If you go back and look, they ran over 190 plays between the two teams. Uh, even with the lower temperatures, you run that many plays, man, especially because Ole Miss had a bunch of guys that were out, so you had guys that were playing every single snap. Yeah, I... Some of those I think were actual like cramp injuries. So I and even even if they weren't, this is just part of the game. Until they find a way to enforce penalties on something like this, you can't you can't stop somebody from faking an injury. So Ed, well, do you, you have can't any thoughts? Stop them, but can I not like it? Can I yeah, call yeah, them out can, on it? Yeah, we can. Because I don't do like that. it. I don't like it. I'm a, I'm a consistent across the board. When my team does it, I think it's bullshit. When other teams do it, I think it's bullshit. Like, I understand it's a manipulation of the rule, and we need to change the rule. I know they'll never change the rule. They'll absolutely never change it. And I really don't even know how to appropriately change it. That's the biggest problem. Because because at some point in time, you are going to end up penalizing a team for having a legitimate injury. And that, so I don't know the answer to that, all right? But I do know that it's bullshit, and it's got we've got to find a way to stop it. Yeah. No, it, it, was, it got a little out of hand. In, in Knoxville last night, uh, between both of the teams, uh, I've never seen a Tennessee. Well, the spot, the spot on the on the on the fourth down play, was yeah. was complete and utter bullshit. And then, how did you see the screenshot of the referee that 
called the spot and where he was coming from and how he's the one that's supposed to determine where that spot was. Yes. I mean, he was 35 yards downfield away from the play running towards it. How in the hell do you know where to spot the football? And they what don't. angle do you have? Uh, he, there's no so way. Why that he are we had not reviewing angle. that? Why are we not saying you're not allowed to make that call? We're gonna let the compu- We're gonna let something else make that call. Here is so. So this is another thing that we need to figure out: is why, with all the technology that we have today, why in the world are we letting it, terrible like camera angles and refs coming from 35 yards away? decide where a ball is supposed to be spotted like where did he get the ball to has has anybody has anybody watched tennis in a long time i know that's not like a big sport that people who are football guys usually watch okay but (laughs) tennis has this figured out and they figure it out in seconds you're talking like 90 seconds they figure this shit out because they have the entire place gridded out electronically yeah and it's it's microchips this is right this is, this is not that complicated of a thing. This is not a very hard problem to solve. It's a problem that football has refused to solve openly. And they say we like the human. They use all these old bullshit reasons for doing it. You know what? I still like cooking with fire, okay? But it doesn't mean it's the only way you should be cooking all of your food. All right. Yeah. You just you we it's the 21st century, damn it. Like let's do something different. We have so many cameras around. The fact that they get some of the shittiest camera angles. Like how is that possible? Larry jumped in and said put a camera on the down marker. I that is not going to solve all of these. Like it's just not because from the backside of where he was reaching that ball, there was a defender in front of where the ball was. You're not going to be able to see it every time. So there's there's other things. The microchipping, the, the microchipping, uh, the, the gritting you just it out. Have to do it the way. Yeah, listen, I know nobody wants to. Nobody in football wants to take take tips from tennis. All right, that's just like the anti football <laughs> thing to do. But that's what we should be doing, by the way. At, we should at, go at to least, smarter, more intelligent people and say, "How did you fix this problem? Okay, and why did you fix it this way? Because you were tired of people screaming and hollering and losing their shit over." 15 minutes of arguing about something that you're the officials not going to change their mind on, but also you're talking of millions and millions of dollars being swung in value. Right. And I'm not talking about gambling. I'm talking about winning football games and what it matters to schools, to programs, to teams, to coaches, to, to athletic departments. I'm talking about how much money every call is actually worth. All right. And the fact that we just refuse to do things where we know we could get it right if we wanted to, because we just have our ways about us. Fuck yeah. those ways. Ryan McCracken said all the tech in the world would make that a first down. I don't, I don't know about that. It was really, really close. I will say that. I mean, who knows? He, he had the ball. He didn't extend the ball. He should have extended the ball. Like, hang on. We'll just hang on. If you've got clear evidence. Okay, if you've got clear evidence that it wasn't a first down, you don't have the scene afterwards. Not defending it. I'm not saying it was okay, but if we had the technology, if we use the technology, we have the technology. If we use the technology to fix it, we wouldn't have had the problem last night. Tennessee fans could have been very pissed off, been very upset, but they would have been very upset for different reasons, and it wouldn't have been blaming the refs. It wouldn't have been blaming somebody doing something that doesn't favor them. Yes. Yes, I'm with you. All right. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.